the course of our investigation, our team has provided a number of theories and perspectives regarding the content we are researching. We have since attracted the attention of some noteworthy professionals in fields such as human trafficking prevention, sociology, child psychology, law, and even politics. Today, we are proud to share with our growing audience a testimonial from an esteemed researcher, Dr. Judith Reisman. Dr. Reisman has an extensive and impressive background, a lifetime of research and passionate work against pornographers and the pseudoscience of Alfred Kinsey and the Kinsey Institute. She has authored several best-selling publications, including Sexual Sabotage in 2010, and is frequently cited by dozens of world-renowned publications. Dr. Reisman is also considered an expert witness on court cases involving pornography and media issues relating to culturalized sexualization and fetishism. Needless to say, she is certainly also an expert on the subjects we are investigating, and it's an honor to have her give us a testimonial regarding the subject at hand. Without further delay, we now present an investigating YouTube exclusive, Dr. Judith Reisman. First question is, after looking at um, the top 10 YouTube videos for investigating YouTube, what are your initial reactions? Um, massively deviant and uh, sick and angry people are creating these videos, people who hate children, and indeed pedophilia, uh, people who are. Uh, involved themselves or who um, are partial to uh, abuse of children, both physical and sexual. That is clear through all these materials. There is no other alternative explanation for the kinds of things that are on these videos. So how did we get to the, to the point in our society where these kinds of things would even be in the realm of possibility that someone would, would think to create them? Uh, the, we go back to the beginning. Uh, actually, it took three generations to create the number of uh, deviant personalities who, who dominate the media today. Uh, the concept of fake news is not new news, um, and it is based upon the lack of ethics uh, in the media. That lack of ethics stems from a complete disregard for the moral beliefs of, uh, of our society, really, that our society was built on. Uh, let me go back to when I was working for Captain Kangaroo at CBS TV. Um, and I had finished a stint for educational television, uh, is what it was called, now it's called PBS, in Milwaukee. And I was working now for um, Captain. And um, one day, it was in the 70s, uh, I was called in to the producer's office, Jim Hirschfeld, and he sat me down and showed me some printouts that were made of children's attention span, which was evaluated by their eye pupil dilation, apparently. They had hidden cameras behind the, the, the videos that these children would be viewing, and they had plotted them out um, on graphs and charts. Uh, they had um, analyzed these, uh, there was a, and he showed me the chart that showed one of the, showed children listening to my song, um, and it started up here, and then it started going down because the children were thinking, were, were, were paying attention to the words and, and thinking about the music, which, which I used only a guitar for, and most of the other, other works were, were musical works which involved orchestration and so on. And he said to me, look, he said, we, we think your, your music is wonderful. We love it. That's why we use it. It's very nice. He said, but, uh, you know, the fact is that now with so many mothers at work not guarding their children uh, and what they watch, he said, the kids are turning the handle themselves and they're turning off Captain and they're switching to the slam bang, uh, you know, 
cartoon character things that are going on on the other channels. He said, we have to keep the advertisers. The advertisers won't support us if the adrenaline is not high. And the adrenaline isn't high unless there's a lot of anxiety, emotional commitment, um, you know, going on in the child's brain. So can you change your, your writing style, which I couldn't and wouldn't do. But that, that was in the 70s. So if we look at these, these videos that are being produced by these deviant, pedophile, inundated characters who are creating them, um, then, and please do sue me, you know, I'll happily defend myself in a court of law. Um, then, uh, you know, you, you see the anxiety that the child is experiencing when the, when the child is viewing this material. When the child is viewing uh, Elsa being attacked by the Spider-Man uh, sexually, when you are viewing the uh, stimuli that is coming out of these uh, horrible scenes of things growing in Elsa's ear, of um, these uh, fecal activities uh, that, that are engaged in uh, with Elsa and with the Spider-Man, uh, all these absolutely deformed, de degenerate, De incredibly degenerate uh, materials that are being watched. And by the way, your, your uh, YouTube analysis I find to be extraordinary. It's excellent. Um, uh, I, I, I was thinking what more can I contribute to the analyses that you have done on your YouTube analyses of these materials. And we are, the parents and the country is indebted to your investigators who have put that together. So um, you have to understand when it started. Yeah, when did it start? Well, in, in 1948, uh, uh, Dr. Alfred Kinsey of the Kinsey Institute, which is, exists right now at Indiana University, produced a book called Sexual Behavior in the Human Male. Uh, it went out all over the country. It was supported by the Rockefeller Foundation. It had millions of dollars behind it to promote it, it went globally, global acceptance. Uh, in that book, uh, Dr. Kinsey lied. He was a sadomasochist, which applies to these vi videos, very much a sadomasochist. Um, he was a pedophile, which is, you see in these videos. This was all hidden. Uh, he was a masturbatory addict, which is part of the videos. Uh, he was, uh, of course, um, uh, an adulterer and a homosexual bisexual, which is all kind of, oh, very much part of, of this material, and believe that, um, and, and, and said that sexuality is so fluid we can be anything. So all this is reflected today, three generations later, in the creation of the videos that we now are seeing here for children. Um, now, the, the, that and the main thing, of course, was that Kinsey also, as I said, was a pedophile. We know that because he was involved in the sexual uh, torture, rapes of uh, at least 317 to 2035 infants and children, two months of age uh, to 14 years of age, for so called orgasms. So, this is a long way of saying all of this began to move into the culture. Hugh Hefner said that he was a virgin himself until age 22, which was common at that time. And uh, he said that reading Kinsey changed everything. He then, from then on, was going to be Kinsey's pamphleteer. And as most of you probably know, he created a magazine subsequent to that called Playboy, which began the, the transition for America and the world from, from our moral position, our common laws, our laws, because all those got changed based on Kizzy, um, trans, the, the transition across the track, we track it all the way, the timeline, from Playboy to Penthouse to Hustler, each, each 
each each period of time closing and closing to today's bludgeoning pornography um, and uh, eventually things like today this these these videos by Disney uh, or if not by Disney uh, approved by Disney I, I remember in Playboy there were there was a nude girl about uh, supposedly about seven years of age lying on uh, Disney sheets Disney sheets there were the sheets across her her foot but the rest of her was obviously naked and it was an incest uh, picture she was a real girl and it was an incest picture I won't quote it act you know here because it's obscene um, but it urged um, incest and it, it, it urged rape of this little girl um, and Disney was there on her on her feet now Disney never did anything about that uh, the, that sequence on play in Playboy but at the same time I recalled reading that they were suing a nursery school for putting the Mickey Mouse images on their little wooden uh, wall outside the nursery school. They sued for that. Disney is known as being the most lit litigious uh, and protective of its, of its copyrights. So to use Elsa and to use uh, the Frozen as images and dress these, these Elsa characters in their clothing and have them act out as as they did, as they do. Uh, and the Marvel comic and the, the Superman, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the um, Spider-Man, you know, comic. Uh, to have all that present in these, in these videos, as far as I, I am concerned, what I would love to see this open them up, Disney, Disney itself for whatever part it plays. I would love to see it open up for a massive lawsuit. I would like to see a congressional investigation at least take place of, the, of this, this material. Who's doing it? Why? What do they have in mind? We know that the children who are watching it are imitating. We know that copycat crimes are standard for, even for adults, copycat crimes copycat crimes for children. Now how many people are keeping track of who is raping the little child in the next room in imitation of Spider-Man on top of Elsa which appears in that material. What about those those uh, those bonds, those uh, those uh, duct tape things that are wrapping another child up you know and in a bed uh, what about Spider-Man doing the things that he is doing? In the, and now, with the, with the film uh, celebrating Spider-Man? This cannot be coincidental. Um, I would say that this is the most... Uh, and I've dealt with harmful materials for the past 30 years. I have dealt with the worst, I thought, of the worst. I really have. I have never seen anything as vicious, as, as sadistic, as pedophilic as I have been witnessing in this material. I cannot say this with more strength than I do. It has got to not only stop but the people who are involved must be arrested. They must be charged with, with contributing to the delinquency of minors, at least, at minimum. We would like to thank Dr. Reisman and her staff at the Liberty Institute for preparing this testimonial. Words as powerful as these are resounding and echo our message loud and clear. We would also like to take this time to invite any other professionals to provide their own perspective as we plan more videos like this one in the future. The investigating YouTube team sees it best to approach the topic from a broad range of perspectives and personalities, because despite our differences, we can all agree on one thing. These videos are not appropriate for children. 
please write to us at investigatingyoutube at protonmail.com if you would like to contribute to an upcoming video. We are also seeking testimonials from concerned parents or those whose children have been exposed to this content. We will do our best to help get your message out for the world to hear, as it has become our duty to continue investigating YouTube. Please subscribe to our channel to follow along with our investigation and share these videos with any parents in your life so we may continue to expose the darker side of children's YouTube.